Hey there, welcome to another edition of Solve My Math Homework's Video Solutions. Today we're going to look at limits involving trigonometric functions. Okay, so let's get started. All right, so it says here we have the limit as x approaches 0 of tangent squared of x all over x. So generally speaking, sine and cosine, so we know sine of x is defined and continuous everywhere. Okay, it's not like tangent where it has breaks. Cosine also is defined and continuous everywhere. Those are the little graphs of sine and cosine you may remember. So we have to look at this and say, generally speaking, now generally speaking, the limit as x approaches c of the sine of x is equal to the sine of c. Okay, direct substitution. Same with our cosine function. So the, cos the limit as x approaches c of cosine of x is generally equal to the cosine of c. But in this case, and in most cases when they're asking for the limit, something weird is happening. So let's look at this, okay? So this is generally the limit as x approaches 0 of tangent squared of x all over that limit as x approaches 0 of x. So the first problem we see is that we're going to have a 0 in the denominator. That's definitely a no-no. So, and the second problem is we really don't want to deal with tangent. Whenever we can, we're going to put tangent in terms of sine and cosine. So let's remember that tangent is equal to sine over cosine. Therefore, tangent squared is sine squared over cosine squared. And let's rewrite it using that, okay? Also, another hint here, when you have limits involving trig functions and they are approaching zero, that's kind of a hint that we're going to use one of our special trigonometric uh, limits. And if you don't remember them, I'm going to give you the one that we're going to use today. So this is a special trig limit, and we are not going to prove it today because that would be another video all by itself. So a special trig limit says that the limit as x approaches zero of the sine of x all over x is equal to one, okay? So we're going to use that. Now you don't know that you're gonna use it yet, but I have a little hint here because x is approaching zero. It's a trig function. Tangent squared does involve sine and cosine. Actually, it involves sine squared and cosine squared. So I'm just gonna keep this in mind over here. Okay, so let's start rewriting. Let's rewrite tangent squared as sine squared over cosine squared. So this is really sine squared of x all over cosine squared of x times 1 over x, okay? Basically, I've, I rewrote this nicer. I could have said sine squared of x all over cosine squared of x, and then instead of divide, multiply by 1 over x, but I just did it in one step. So there we go, okay? So looking at this, I still have an x in the denominator, so that's still bad but I have a sine squared over here. So I wanna try and rewrite them so that I can get a sine x over x because I'm really close. So I know that if I take this sine squared and break it up as sine of x over cosine squared of x times sine of x over x, those would still multiply to give me sine squared of x all over x times cosine x, which is equal to what I have up there. Okay, so, and if you're having a little trouble seeing that, let me do it in a different color. Tangent squared of x, right? That's equal to sine squared of x over cosine squared of x, all times one over x. So if I were to multiply this, I would get sine squared of x. I'm gonna bring this x over here because it's gonna be a mess over there. Cosine squared of x. So everything so far still equal. Okay, so we'll get rid of all this. So now we do have a limit that we can take. So if I just say, okay, now I wanna take the limit as x approaches zero of sine of x all over cosine squared of x times sine of x all over x, I know that this is one based on that rule, okay? See this rule? That is what that is. Okay, as x approaches zero, sine of x over x. So now we know we could put direct substitution in. So the sine of zero, remember our graph, 
for sine, sine of zero starts at zero, so that's going to give me a zero up there. Cosine squared of x, so cosine of x, uh, if x is zero, is one, and one squared is simply still one. So let's get rid of this. We have zero over one, which is zero. Okay, so this is zero times one, which is zero. So we can safely say the limit as x approaches zero of tangent squared of x over x equals zero. Kind of anticlimactic that we wound up just getting zero for something that started out so interesting. But anyway, those are how you do these. There's lots of different trig limits that you can do, lots of different factoring techniques that you can use. I'm sure we'll see more videos of these as we keep going in this AP Calc course. So if you have any questions, pop them in the comments and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and I'll do your homework next.